it. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> See, this is what I feel every YouTuber needs. 96 hour energy. Why stop at five when you can get 96? Oh man, the lights are starting to flicker. Let's take shelter in this tent. I, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. This goes way back, by the way. Oh boy. Oh geez. Oh geez. <laughs> oh wait, what? What is this? I love this so much. This is so cool. This is unbelievable. Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's here to give you some idea of what's in store for you. Earlier this year, after hundreds and hundreds of comments from theorists, I finally got the message and made an episode about Omega Mart, Meow Wolf's creepy interactive supermarket themed art exhibit at Area 15 in Las Vegas. I mean, after I looked into it, how could I not do an episode on this thing? There's tons of hidden lore, some of which apparently will get unlocked someday if fans are ever clever enough to crack it. Now, if this is the first time that you're hearing about Omega Mart and you're wondering what the heck a Meow Wolf is or why MatPat totally just mixed up the numbers in Area 51 or why this is a food theory, well, I'd recommend that you go watch our first episode on Omega Mart. It'll fill you in on all the Dramcorp drama and grocery story that you'll need to understand today's episode. But for all the rest of you Omega Mart theorist vets, I have some exciting news. We did it. As promised, Steph and I made it out to Las Vegas. We made several visits to Omega Mart and we lived to tell the tale. So, you have all the advertisements outside. I, I'm, I'm liking Daikon Friends, flavor not included. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look. Simply Spider. <laughs> Simply does not contain spiders. spiders. I could be completely overthinking everything. I'm gonna try E215, Janitor Cloud. You're not allowed in that room, okay? That is not part of the game. <laughs> As far as lore's concerned, I'm happy to report that everything we theorized about in our previous Omega Mart episode held up. But before I mat pat myself on the back too hard for solving this one storyline, let me add this, friends. The rabbit hole is deep. If I impart one thing to you theorists today is that there is a staggering amount of lore littered throughout this exhibit in the form of handwritten journals, emails, blog posts, letters, conspiratorial bulletin boards, documents hidden in desk drawers, news broadcasts, commercials, corporate videos, secret codes, product packaging, Dramcorp internal meetings, telephone numbers that you can actually call, glimpses into characters' dreams. Theorists, Steph and I spent a lot of time in Omega Mart. Across our visits, we were there for a total of eight hours. That's not even including our other team members, Dan, Alyssa, Jerrica, and Luke, taking their own visits to grab footage, take measurements, get more details, talk to employees, and read literally everything in this place. In total, we completed both of their story routes, Resistance and Dramcorp, where you can either join the ranks of the evil corporate overlords or fight against their takeover. We got pictures and footage of everything that we possibly could, and still, there are so many little details and clues in minigames that I have no doubt that we missed. There's simply no way to cover everything in one episode, but today, I'd like to zero in on something specific that got my theory brain churning more than anything else that we encountered inside the Omega Mart exhibit. Something that is never explicitly talked about or addressed in the story and is overlooked by 99.99% of people going through this thing, but something that actually has huge implications for everything else going on in this world. And that is a 2014 email from Kaz Matsumura, VP of Future Ability to former CEO Walter Dram. In the email, we see Kaz pitch the idea of using Dramcorp's factory portals to deliver products directly to a flagship Omega Mart store in Las Vegas. Distribution costs, Kaz explains, would be nada. Now, what I can't stop thinking about here is the word flagship, which insinuates that there might actually be more Omega Mart locations on the horizon. So, I want to know, are other Omega Mart locations planned, and if so, where should we expect those things to spring up? Like, am I gonna be able to pop into an Omega Mart here in Raleigh anytime I need some whale song deodorant and a refreshing can of dehydrated water? Well, friends, we found some clues in Vegas that lead me to believe that Dramcorp and Meow Wolf have big plans for Omega Mart's expansion and eventual world takeover. So, something we found inside the exhibit was this key to the Xenion alphabet, which proved invaluable because it let us piece together a lot of Xenion backstory littered throughout Seven Monolith Village. Now, that was 
a lot of lingo that I just dropped, so let's back up and proceed with caution theorists, because difficult spills and Omega Mart spoilers lie ahead. Basically, the Xenions were a fish-like alien race in the lore of Omega Mart. You can actually visit a psychedelic room dedicated to them in the outskirts of the Omega Mart facility, complete with dead alien carcass and a book of lore needing to be translated. From that book, we learn that Source comes from the Xenion home planet. For those of you who don't remember, Source is basically this magical substance that kind of functions like liquid dopamine. You have some, it makes you really happy, and if you have too much, you get addicted to it. It's what Dram Corp is infusing into all their products to fuel consumerism. The Source proved to be a double-edged sword for the Xenion race. On one hand, they thrived and were able to gain the ability to walk on land thanks to its abundance, but they also became dependent on it in order to survive. Their planet existed in a dimension that paralleled our own until about 50,000 years ago when something happened. Some type of cataclysmic event occurred in the wellspring where the Xenion priests collected the Source. This event was so massive and so powerful that the Xenion's planet and ours were knocked off their paths and collided. Basically, the Xenion's capital city crashed into present-day Las Vegas, covering it in water and making it super green and lush. And that's how a small portion of each planet became permanently overlapped with the other, which is what you saw at the top of this episode. Me crawling through that tent into the magical desert oasis with a glowing stream? Yep, that's the two universes occupying the same space at the same time, otherwise known as the Forked Earth. The glowing stream? That's the source pouring out. The remaining Xenion die off and humans take control of the main source well. That's where Dramcorp's factory is located and where they synthesize the source into Additive S, a substance that they put into all of Omega Mart's products because it's proven to increase consumer satisfaction by 700%. Omega Mart is where it is in Las Vegas because canonically, there's a portal to the Forked Earth there. Omega Mart is built on that portal between dimensions because let's face it, interdimensional shipping rates otherwise are pretty darn steep. That's one of the big reasons why Dramcorp's advanced research team Dart is trying so hard to understand portal technology. Because once they're able to create and control portals, they'll be able to open new Omega Marts wherever they'd like to. But they're struggling to master the technology and it's not quite stable yet. How are things coming along? So the good news is we did create a new portal yesterday. Huge success there. Really great. Small caveat, it opened in the Mega Mart and tiny issue, a customer. Oh, I'm sure my crack team will figure that out. Actually, that's not absolutely mistress. The portal led to where it so if Dramcorp is going to build a second Omega Mart anytime soon, it's probably going to have to get built on an existing portal, which means it's going to have to get built within the geographic boundaries of the forked Earth. So the question now becomes, what are those boundaries? How big is this overlap between Earth and the Xenion's planet? We talk in the size of the Area 15 building, the size of Las Vegas. Are other Meow Wolf exhibits in Denver and Santa Fe involved in this thing? Well, friends, let me explain. While checking out the Happles in Omega Mart's produce department, I happened to glance over and catch this clip of an in-store video that was playing. Okay, pause that and go back a bit. If you look closely, you can see the names of several eastern Nevada towns. Ruth, Major's Place, Lund, and Duckwater. Plenty Valley, then, if it is indeed a real place, would be located right around here, some 200 miles or 320 kilometers north of Omega Mart's Las Vegas location. Plenty Valley, which also happens to be the name of a private label brand found on Omega Mart shelves, is the location from which many of Omega Mart's crops are sourced. Pun definitely intended, because crops grown in Plenty Valley tend to turn out looking like this and this and this. Could Plenty Valley, located way out in the absolute middle of nowhere, really be within the boundaries of the forked earth? It certainly would make sense from a distribution standpoint. If there's a portal connecting the factory to Plenty Valley, hey, then those are savings that Omega Mart can pass on to you, the valuable consumer. But there's another reason to believe that Plenty Valley lies inside the forked earth. See those bodies of water on the map? Those don't exist in this region of Nevada as we know it. Their existence suggests that Plenty Valley, which sure is awfully green and lush compared to the Nevada desert that we know, became inundated with with water when the Xenion's watery world overlapped with our own, and the landscape was permanently altered even after the water receded. So I believe that these fictitious lakes, the fictitious Plenty Valley, as well as the route Walter apparently drove by car, which also follows no real roadways, aren't a mistake on Meow Wolf's part, they're actually a very intentional way of showing us that this region is shared by two dimensions, with half the landmarks being familiar to us Earthlings and the other half alien. But it seems like the Forked Earth might actually be way bigger than just the 200 miles across. You see, Meow Wolf has two 
two other permanent installations, one in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the House of Eternal Return, and another that just opened up in Denver called Convergent Station. Now, all three of these definitely exist within the same Meow Wolf universe. For instance, this is an Easter egg that I found in the Dart Laboratories of Omega Mart, which alludes to QDOT, which, according to my research, is the multiversal transit authority that you can find over in Convergent Station. And when I think of an animal in a desert, a hamster isn't exactly the first one that pops to my mind, so this drawing in Omega Mart's Seven Monolith Village feels like a pretty deliberate reference to Nimsescu from House of Eternal Return. So it would appear that the three Meow Wolf installations are canonically aware of each other's existence. All three installations also feature portals very heavily, but uh, so far it doesn't seem as though the portal networks are actually interconnected. For one thing, the portals in different exhibits are apparently caused by different mysterious forces. In Omega Mart, it's the Source. In House of Eternal Return, it's referred to as the Anomaly. Now, Source and the Anomaly could very well be revealed to be the exact same thing one day, but until I get a chance to visit all three of these locations, I can't know for sure. Who knows? Maybe Dart will eventually figure out how to integrate with these other portal networks. Because when they do, Dram Corp will suddenly be able to put Omega Marts in a bunch of different cities. Or, you know, they can just find Marin, who at this point has the ability to just make the portals herself. Anyway, that's my prediction for the big picture expansion that we might see from Omega Mart in years to come, but I also think we're gonna see another expansion much sooner than that. Not a new Omega Mart location per se, but rather an addition to the Las Vegas one. Consider Meow Wolf's first permanent installation, House of Eternal Return. It opened in 2016, was well received, then in 2018 they opened a new portal inside the exhibit. Given how wildly successful Omega Mart's been, it seems that they'd be wise to follow in their own footsteps and open a new section of Omega Mart, right? Something fresh to advance the story and draw fans back into the exhibit after a couple of years. And in the case of Omega Mart, I have a theory, a food theory, that a new portion of the exhibit will be just beyond the source door. For those of you who haven't seen, the source door is an actual physical door inside the factory section of the Las Vegas exhibit. Visitors to the factory can look through the window in the door and see the source well on the other side. But here's the weird thing. Even after you successfully plug in the code to unlock the source door, it doesn't open. You just get regaled with a soliloquy from a glowing orb that has Walter's voice. This is Walter just talking. Is the Zenyan before us. Zenyans. We will be undone by our greed. Cool. I thought this would open into the source well, but hey, that's cool. Yeah, so apparently Walter isn't actually dead. He just ascended to the ethereal plane of the source, which is something that we might dive into in a future episode. Anyway, once Walter's orb fades away, you're left staring at a locked door. The source is still closed to you, and this massive door refuses to open. Now, here's where I'm going with this. If you watched our previous episode on Omega Mart, you already know that there was a lot of talk about doors. Elsewhere in the store is a journal full of lots of juicy lore details. In the journal, one employee talks about accidentally bringing a number of objects to life using Source. These mascots, as he calls them, are small but surprisingly useful. A note on one page has Cecilia saying that they're, quote, like guard dogs for anyone trying to get into what's beyond that side door of mine. And earlier we discussed how Meow Wolf's own CEO let slip that there was a, quote, locked gate that's keeping people away from new story elements. I believe that the Source door is that gate. I believe that at some point it will actually physically open and visitors to Omega Mart will be able to enjoy an entirely new area. And it's not just the lore that has me thinking this either. I believe the actual floor plan of Meow Wolf's exhibit inside Area 15 lends itself to this theory as well. Follow me on this. It seems Meow Wolf is leasing a large rectangular two-story space within the greater Area 15 building. Here's my super professional drawing of the first floor layout from memory, because apparently there's absolutely no Omega Mart floor plans out there on the internet. Now, right here is the location of the source door. See that blue area behind it? I can't tell you what's inside the blue area because visitors aren't allowed in there. At least not on the day that we were there. Now, some of you are probably thinking to yourself, whoa, easy with the conspiracy theories, Matt Pat. Meow Wolf might not be leasing the space on the other side of the source door. And that's a fair point. There's nothing that says a tenant's floor plan has to be a rectangular space. However, check out the floor plan of the second floor. You'll notice that Meow Wolf has the second floor space directly above that blue area. Yep, that yellow space there is almost like a futuristic art gallery that visitors, including yours truly, can access. That means Meow Wolf definitely controls the blue area directly below it on the first floor too. Now, I get that there are going to be some employees-only areas within this exhibit. There need to be janitorial closets that aren't fake janitorial closets. There need to be employee break rooms that aren't fake employee break rooms. But isn't it odd that there's approximately 700 square feet, or 65 square meters that are unaccounted for, precisely on the other side of a very prominent and famous door in the lore of the series? A door that sure seems like it should have opened based on everything that we know about Omega Mart. And isn't it odd that of Omega Mart's four walls, the source door wall just so happens to be 
be the only wall that could be torn down to increase the wildly popular Omega Mart exhibit's square footage if need be. It's true, two of Omega Mart's walls are exterior walls to the Area 15 building, and one is the exhibit's face to Area 15's inner courtyard. All I'm saying is that if Omega Mart has absolutely zero intention of ever expanding, and zero intention of ever opening the source door, why did they just so happen to place that door in the ideal position for potential expansion into adjacent places within the Area 15 building? Which leaves just one major question. What the heck do we have to do to open that source door? Well, that, friends, is a $600,000 question. I don't think it's gonna be easy. I think it's gonna require us Meow Wolf fans to weave together a bunch of threads that food theory hasn't quite discussed in depth yet. The resistance, Marin's disappearance, the leadership ascension track, this literal scepter in the drawer of Cecilia's desk. Oh, did I not mention that she has a scepter in a desk that she uses to, quote, activate the stones? Definitely keep an eye out for more Omega Mart episodes, friends, because things are about to get very interesting. But hey, before we go any further, I'd like to give a massive shout out to our friends over at Grubhub for sponsoring today's episode. Honestly, if you'd asked me six months ago, what's the one company that would never ever sponsor a food theory video, I would have said these guys. Usually when you do an April Fool's video making fun of their commercials and breaking down their quote unquote lore, companies don't take too kindly to that one. But endless kudos to Grubhub for getting the joke, leaning in, and having a bit of fun with us. So today, I want to talk about the Grubhub Guarantee. With the Grubhub Guarantee, you get your food delivered at the lowest price and on time, guaranteed, or they'll make it right for you. I mean, that sounds pretty great, right? Perhaps too great. As I always say, trust, but verify. So I decided to put the Grubhub Guarantee to the test. I bought lunch for the team at one of our favorite places here in Raleigh. I compared Grubhub's price against other food delivery services, and sure enough, nobody had a better price, so I guess they won that round. But then the food arrived, and this is actually really exciting. It was delivered three minutes later than the estimated delivery time. Never thought I'd be so excited to get my food late, but what it did was give me a chance to actually take Grubhub up on this guarantee of theirs by submitting a claim in the app. Then it was time to sit back and wait to see if I got a response within 24 hours. In less than three hours, they sent me some money off on my next order. So, I guess that's one Grubhub theory that survived the stress test, but you don't have to take my word for it. Click the link down in the description below to order your local favorites and test the Grubhub guarantee for yourself. Thanks again to Grubhub for sponsoring today's episode. Again, a reminder, their link is the top line of the description. Thanks again to all of you for watching, and as always, remember, it's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.